I think I will proceed with meeting. Committees of Parliament have begun receiving policy statements from various sectors, and today the ICT Committee got the Ministry of ICT and National Guidance, as well as several entities that fall under it. Irene Kagwa, the Executive Director of the Uganda Communications Commission, informed the committee during our presentation that the organization had anticipated generating 160 billion shillings in income by December of last year, but had actually managed to generate 67 billion shillings. She says that the anticipated generating 207 billion shillings in income for the fiscal years 2023-2024. We expected to collect 168 billion and by December we had collected 67 billion. In the financial year 2023-2024 we expect to have a revenue collection of 207 billion Uganda shillings. UCC informed the committee that government owes them much in terms of taxes for the state-owned entities like UBC, Posta Uganda and UTL, which just recently closed and they lobbied the legislators to compel government to pay these taxes. We have a challenge in respect of the government-owned entities like UBC, uh, Posta Uganda is also a data. We've just had the challenge with Uganda Telecom that was recently closed. So these end up being the biggest debtors uh, of UCC. We continue to lobby, again with the support of the ministry, to compel the operators to pay their regulatory dues. The managing director of Posta Uganda, on the other hand, has asked legislators to support them with the e-government initiatives they intend to roll out in Uganda. Arinaitri Gems asserts that they need 23 billion shillings to carry out this project. We seek the support of this committee to have them uh, comments. The post office is meant to offer one-stop center facilities for people in service. The close neighbor to this would be the Huduma Centers in Kenya, where you find all government services offered online in one building. People say it brings in efficiencies and it also eases monitoring. It hasn't yet commenced, Mr. Chairman, um, because it is an unfunded priority and we look forward to opinions on how this can start. When questioned about why Posta Uganda had previously failed to pay its employees' salaries on time, James reminded the committee that Posta Uganda has never received a penny from government and it is totally self-sufficient. Therefore, they have faced issues similar to other sectors in the country. Posta Uganda is a self-sustaining entity. It does not receive funding from government. And I do remember the prayers by Honorable Kabonda were too. How much money has Ministry of Finance released to Costa Uganda? And two, why did salaries delay? Um, I'm quite sure that the political leadership will uh, offer the response in Parliament, but the amount of money released by Ministry of Finance to Costa Uganda is zero. The committee has asked that government pays taxes for its entities since it slows the nation's economic growth. Samlanifa, Smart24 TV, Business Today.